I'm a strong believer in the idea that there is no perfect teacher, just those who continue to improve versus those who do not. This belief translates into my annual routine of identifying a couple of aspects of my teaching to strengthen. I find myself doing very well on two things, enjoying teaching and seeing what needs to be improved next. In the first step, I chose to work on my skills for handling diversity in the classroom. I cater to different abilities by clearly communicating my expectations while setting aside enough materials for the more capable ones. I check in on the weaker ones mid-semester while encouraging the stronger ones to send in optional drafts for feedback or attempt optional further exercises. In my English pronunciation course, some students are near native speakers while others speak English less fluently. I make sure everyone is on top of segmental contrasts such as ban versus ben. Whereas for the stronger ones, I encourage them to focus on more advanced aspects such as the intonation of sarcasm or emphasis. It's important that my students know where they are on the learning curves and channel their efforts accordingly. Another thing that I care about is pastoral care. I believe that students will learn more if they think I want them to learn. And if I don't care about them, they won't care what I say. One incident that really confirms this belief is a former field experience supervision with my student, Jay. She's a non-local student, not knowing what to expect back then. Initially, her Evie was quite bumpy, with lots to pick up and little background knowledge or experience to rely on. But right from the start, I knew it wasn't ability that she lacked, but confidence. Through working with Jay and her amazing supporting teacher, she eventually completed her FE successfully, and now she is employed as a full-time teacher in a local school. I'm very, very proud of her. When designing my courses, I bear in mind that my students are products of the 21st century. For example, they prefer watching videos to reading books. I always try to make teaching as interactive as possible. Even for asynchronous e-learning, I make sure students interact by embedding tasks such as online quizzes and map tasks. As a member of a few of the university's teaching development projects, I've helped promote the use of iSpring packages on Moodle to enhance students' learning experience. I always love taking Dr. Albert Lee's lessons. His lessons are well prepared and interesting. I remember when I was in year one, I took a course called Introduction to Phonetics and Phonology. I would put all kinds of memes and interesting videos related to the course into the PowerPoint. It made the lessons more vivid and less boring. Also, I had worked for Dr. Albert Lee for one year as his student research assistant. I learned a lot from him, especially on data analysis. I'm really grateful for Dr. Albert Lee for giving me this precious opportunity. To describe Dr. Albert Lee, I would say he was incredible. Incredible academic ability and incredible enthusiasm in education. He always provides timely support to us, both on academic and personal level. Albert is not only an educator to us, but also one of our family. Every time I give him feedback on some of our classmates' opinions, he would tell us, don't worry, I've helped you. Which made me feel very resolved. More incredible is his educational enthusiasm. He always provides job or learning opportunity to us, not only in class, but even if he leaves the class, he regards us as his most precious students. I'm really happy to receive this award, especially given the high standards of teaching in the Faculty of Humanities. Thank you, and happy 10th anniversary, FHM.